Hello everybody and welcome. Today's stream is going to be working on craft card which is uh, well, craft paper and using charcoal to do a drawing of trees. The equipment that I'll be using is charcoal in various sizes. This type of charcoal that I have is this type, so it's willow charcoal and it's all small short sticks. Loads of variation in shape and size. Then I've got a paper stump which I use for blending. A pencil sharpener and possibly, I'm not too sure yet, uh, tinted charcoal and charcoal pencils. And the charcoal pencils are from this set which is the Derwent Tinted Charcoal set of 12. Uh, the colours, they're okay, but I prefer to work in black and white. Also today, I'm going to be using a putty rubber. And this one is a Derwent one, it's very squidgy. But I'm not going to be using the whole rubber. I'm literally just going to be squishing a piece and taking it off. So, for putty rubber size, that tiny bit is all that I'm really going to be using. And that is because I want to get fine detail with this. So I want to be able to just dab and stroke the paper with it. So I don't need the whole rubber. So that's the equipment list pretty much. So to start, I'm going to take my, my chunky bit of charcoal and cover all of the paper. Uh, and in fact, the paper I've got not, is it's one of these uh, scrapbook books and I'm using it right now to do my coursework some rough notes and quick sketches and this is roughly the effect that I'm hoping to be able to show you today my desk is a bit of a tip right now because I've been doing a lot of projects on there and then little sketches so this is going to be part of my supporting coursework so to start, I take the medium piece of charcoal and I'm going to just gently cover the paper. Um, a few of you are going to be wondering, why are you covering the paper? Well, I want to get a mid, dark and light tone out of this paper. And the brown paper is going to be the mid tone and the light tone. So let's just gently put some charcoal over. And I use my paper stump to just push that back and to just give a nice soft effect. I'm not really after a harsh lined background today. You will notice uh, piles of charcoal build up so you can just very gently blow them away. With certain papers you'll find that you actually massage the charcoal into the paper so it really does depend on what type of paper you're using this is a very smoothish paper so the charcoal sits on top of it now something else that you are probably going to need for this project is fixed tip the one that i'm going to be using is the daily and roly 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 uh, colourless fixative and this is designed for pastels, charcoals and pencils. Once the project's complete I'll be giving the whole thing, taking it outside, spraying it with a very light layer because of the type of paper that I'm using, wait for it to dry and then come back and spray it another layer. With any thin papers you need to just be careful how much of this you apply. You don't need tons, you can do it in layers, very light layers. And it should hold the drawing. I meant my aim today is to get a drawing that is going to stay when I've posted it off to where I have to post it off to. That when my tutor opens up the package, it's not just going to be a smudge. Um, when you're working in charcoal, handy hint, make sure your hands are clean. Well, they're going to get covered in charcoal, but uh, make sure that you've not got oils or greases or anything like that on. Because oils and grease is going to react with this sort of paper and you'll end up with grease marks so it's a handy thing just to clean, make sure you wash and properly dry your hands and yeah you will get covered in charcoal 
A lot of people don't like this medium because you get covered in it. I didn't used to like it at all. Filthy, filthy charcoal, I thought. But uh, over the last six months, doing projects in it for my course, I've got very used to it. And for speed sketching, it's become almost like the thing to grab. And the problem is I can't carry it in a fixative with me all the time. So a little book like this where I can shut the page and the drawing's pretty much safe is always handy. So we've got down the base layer. And now I'm going to use the charcoal pencil just to map out my tree, which is blowing very happily in the wind right now. So when you're drawing a tree, uh, enjoy. I'm just very, very lightly mapping out branches and areas of interest. Hope you guys can see a little bit of the lightness. And I'm using the charcoal pencil because I can get a slightly darker tone with that. Different charcoals will result in different effects. And if you get a gritty bit, don't be tempted to use your finger and swipe it. It's uh, you'll either cause a kind of streak, or um, you'll take too much charcoal off. So if you have to remove charcoal, tap tap brush, knocks it off quite nicely. I'd also say try and buy charcoal which is um, a bit more environmentally friendly because you can get charcoals which are done. Uh, in a certain way that they're not it's not industrial and it's not having such a big impact on forests and things like that so uh, product research is always handy so I'm just mapping in a couple of the darker areas and just putting some shadow in I couldn't see. Yeah. As you can see, it's sketchy, but I've still got a little bit of control over this. This time of year, there are leaves on the tree, so spotting some of the branches is a little bit difficult. Right, so that is my outline for the main tree so I could come in with a white charcoal pencil or chalk and start putting in the highlights and lightest areas like so but I don't need to in a sense I mean I can like I say but today all I need is my little putty wubber and depending on what shape I squidge it into will depend on what the effect is so Kind of a point and spotting will give me quite a sharp uh, piece of detail because it's picked up a pinpoint piece of the charcoal and if I go wide you'll get a wider piece taken off if you push down and twist you get a different shape so if you're doing this technique and you're taking the charcoal off with a putty rubber, experiment with all the different marks that you can make. See what happens when you do it rapidly. And what happens when you do it slowly. And yes, your, your putty rubber is going to end up looking like a black spot. But that's where you can massage it and clean it. So anyway, on with this. So I'm going to do multiple different marks, different pressures. And some of the bits you'll see, I take the putty rubber off, clean it, and then put back in. Others you'll see, I'm going to just go on and keep on going. And you'll notice less charcoal gets picked off the page. And that gives me a really nice mid-tone. And you can smudge a little bit. And this, I quite like the smudging effect. 
Med blandet som blødes. Jeg går over og kalder det højt sovs. More on top right now. It's not the brightest day outside. So I'm taking a step back, reassessing, looking at my subject and then picking out some more areas. And I'm just going to add in a couple of bits onto the tree itself. I'm not so worried if I go over any of my lines because I can rework them. If I'm very careful. Mark a couple of the bushes for the line. Right. Now what I'm going to do is bring in a smudgy stick and just define a couple of areas. And soften out a couple of the marks. Because there's charcoal on the paper already, I can just smudge that around. So any areas that I feel are too light, I can darken off. Now any areas that I want darker, I can grab my charcoal. And let's go for the small piece. And I can just apply areas where I just want a little bit more cast shadow. Some charcoals you'll notice you don't get a very black, dark colour with. Others you will find they're quite dark. So now I'm going to use the white charcoal pencil and I'm just going to map in a little bit of the highlight detail and then this is going to be smudged back. Um, handy can don't rest your hand on the paper otherwise you're just going to get a kind of sideways very very dirty hand. up here. I'm not pushing that hard because I've already got quite a good balance of highlights. And I'm 
I'm just going to use the charcoal again just to pick out a couple of darker areas. Also, I'm just going to add a little bit of the darkness around the tree just to accentuate the shape of it. I mean, this probably isn't the best paper in the world to actually use for charcoal. There are much better papers. But this is, like I say, one of the sketches for supporting evidence of my coursework. And it does the job. Uh, with my course that I'm doing, I'm not spending tons and tons of money on paper for sketches, which aren't going to really be of any use. Uh, I'm putting, if I'm going to buy a decent watercolour and use that, it's got to be for something that I can actually well, invest in, if you like. I think I've spent uh, several hundred pounds in the last few weeks buying watercolour paper, the really good stuff, and I don't want to waste it on just light sketch work like this. Right, give it a tap. Big sponge there. Uh, if you get a lot of charcoal on your hand, oh, and look, I've just put my thumb in it again. <laughs> yeah, this is if this is the uh, effect that happens when you put your finger on there. So, um, yeah, if you do put your finger onto there, and you want to get charcoal off your hand, baby wipes are always quite a good one, but ones that biodegrade. So as you can see, my putty rubber is a little bit dark grey. So what I would do is put it back onto the main putty rubber, massage that back in, take a new piece and just massage that. I do have a daylight lamp shining over here right now, so um, I don't quite know what the effect is looking like for you guys. It looks quite different in different lights. Uh, charcoal can really have some different effects so if you have a bright light shining directly down on it uh, it can be quite reflective I don't know if I can show that um, you can see a little bit so you get kind of shine off of it or it can be quite muted so making sure that you've got the right light conditions to work in can be pretty important I'm just picking out a couple more of the highlights I need to halve that amount of putty rubber and just get a little bit more refined. Let's so maybe just pick out a little bit of detail on the tree trunk. get some lovely rich tonal effects with charcoal and you can cover a lot of areas in detail and give uh, illusions of depth and shading to a drawing so those little bits of white I'm going to just smooth out slightly I don't want too many harsh lines on this. So I'm using the back part of my pencil. Um, 
paper pencils rubber thing and if you think you've gone too far back or you're not too sure you can always add a little bit more charcoal and then again use the rubber just to push and pull it back So now using the charcoal pencil, which is a little bit darker, I'm just going to redefine a little bit of the detail of the tree and add in some darker areas of shadow. Once again, try not to make the lines too harsh. And just, there we go, let the camera reset. That's a bit closer to what I can physically see. Uh, it is actually a bit darker, but I'm not expecting my camera to pick up how dark and whatnot it is. And taking the daylight lamp off, I've also taken away a lot of the shine that I can see. Let's add a couple of areas of a little bit more detail, and that's using the smaller charcoal stick. Try and darken up this little bit. Yeah. Right. Right, bear me two seconds. Right, it's me shaking up the colours that's good. Never spray things like fixative or anything like that in the room that you're working. You need to do it outside in the air. Uh, making sure your pets are all well away. It's not an ideal situation to use this indoors at all. You will end up very ill from breathing this in. So for me, what I will do is I'll hold it on its side using the ring, spray one in the same direction, and then I'll be back in two seconds. I'm doing this outside the window. Wait, is there a shock? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's been sprayed with a very light layer. <coughs> God, it still sticks. Now you'll notice it's gone black almost. I'll try this quickly. Yep. 
you're thinking where's the drawing gone well, it's kind of set back into the paper because of the fixative because the fixative is wet and it's going on to brown light brown paper well light brown paper when you wet it goes dark brown um slightly over sprayed on this corner but i can fix that so once that's dry i can then come back in and add another layer and darken off areas and push some of the highlights and oddly enough even though i've put a fixative down i can still remove charcoal off of this and that's where keeping up the layers of fixative can be a really really big bonus I mean, the Dolan Riley fixative is a pretty good one. Stinks to high heaven. In fact, it's actually that light layer, I think, has done quite a good job. So it's wet, which really idealistically don't work on the drawing once it's wet. Give it the time to dry. So I'm just making a couple of soft marks that I just want to push a couple of areas. Now if I want to I can come through with the white charcoal and start to pick out a couple of little highlights. Big benefit about charcoal pencils is that you can sharpen them a bit, not greatly, not like uh, Prismacolor or Polychromo sharp, uh, but you can get a edge on there that will give you fine detail if you're very very light with your hand. And just add a little bit of highlight work onto the branches.
I'm just gonna push that back. Soften those marks down. I can come through with the putty rubber again and just make little tweaks. So breaking up solid matters. there we go so that is how I would approach doing a tree on craft paper with literally just black and white charcoal and a putty rubber it's that simple and it's quite therapeutic and relaxing to do you can build it up as much as you like or you can reduce layers you can really have a good play with it there's definitely one that uh, if you're out and about with a sketchbook and you want to get something down quite quickly it's quite a good way of getting down a, quite a bit of detail because in a sense all you have to worry about is the shape of the trunk and as long as you've got a good idea of where the uh, canopy of the tree is you can pick out and fill in any gaps that you want to just by taking charcoal off the paper or adding it to it So I hope that's uh, given you some ideas or something new to try. Anyway, I'm just being fastidious now. So, yep, yeah, so that's charcoal pencils, charcoal, proper stuff, putty rubber, torn into a bit, a pencil uh, blender, probably need a pencil sharpener at some point. And uh, if you've got one, a tin of fixative that you can fix the drawing later. So, like I say, I hope this has been a bit of an inspiration and given you some ideas. And maybe inspires you to go and try out some different media. Yes, charcoal is messy. And yeah, you end up with kind of marks everywhere. Nothing a baby wipe can't fix. And with if you get proper charcoal sticks like this willow charcoal you can flatten off a side by just pushing it into the paper so you have a flat edge you can get a point on there it's a very very diverse bit of kit yeah hope you've enjoyed so till next time 
Take care and happy drawing to you all.